It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Charles Osgood. No, I freely admit that I cannot pull a rabbit out of a hat unless it's in there to begin with. For real magic, you need a real magician. Unfortunately, Rita Braver has been to see one of the best. Watch this. Tonight I'm going to share with you not just magic of the hands, but something entirely different. Magic of the heart and magic of the mind. And Steve Cohen's heart and mind, along with his hands, are fully dedicated to making magic. To do this, I'd like to borrow some rings from those of you around the room. If you have a ring on, you wouldn't mind lending. Watch what happens after he borrows a few rings from audience members. Oh, that would do the trick. Thank you very much. Very good. And your first name? Charlie. Charlie? Charlie? Okay, very good. All right, I think we've got enough. I usually use four. I guess tonight we'll just use these three. And may I have the glass you've been so patiently holding? Is the glass empty? Thank you. We'll place the rings inside. As I swirl them inside the glass, I'll recite an ancient magic phrase. Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. The rings have linked. Molly, yes. make sure that's yours. Really linked on the chain? Yes. It's yours? Yes. And then a few minutes later. He unlinks the rings as the audience looks on in wonder. You may be able to hear the metal as it penetrates through the other metal molly focus. Is that yours? Yes, it is. It is indeed. Cohen, now 37, has been enchanted by magic since he was a child in the New York suburbs. This is you, sixth grader goes under a magic spell? Yep, well, that was my uh, first piece of press when I was about uh, 12 years old. Doing card tricks? Doing card tricks, and I even had a pet bird. Which got him into a bit of trouble. I took the bird, and I made the bird vanish. And then one time when I was performing up in Westchester, this, this mother refused to pay me uh, until I told her where the bird was. <laughs> and all the kids were chanting, where's the bird? Where's the bird? And, um, and so eventually my mom had a talk with the lady and she was reasonable, so I got paid and we all walked out of there. And the mystery still lingers. His first teacher was his great uncle, Nat Zuckerman, an amateur magician. Uh, he used to say to us, he's like, everyone gather around. Okay, come on in class, I'll show you a trick. Cohen says his uncle actually knew Harry Houdini, the fabled magician of the early 20th century. But it's not Houdini's spectacular escape stunts that fascinate Cohen. Nor does he aspire to big production illusions performed by magicians like David Copperfield. Very purposefully, I have marketed my show as being an evening of uh, very intimate magic. Um, it's a demonstration of modern conjuring. The name of this demonstration is Think a Drink. Think a Drink. The last so his audiences get a close look as Cohen asks them to think about and name their favorite drinks. Tangerine juice. What was it? Tangerine juice. Tangerine juice. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I got a question for you. Would you, would you like that? with or without pulp. And all from the same magic kettle, Cohen proceeds to pour tangerine juice, as well as a margarita, pink oh, lemonade, pink lemonade, and 30-year-old scotch, <laughs> inviting guests to taste the drinks they've requested. And would you please uh, smell it first? Does it smell like scotch? Yes. Yes, you can smell it too. And now, have a taste, have a taste. It's all yours, but have as much as you like. <laughs> and age 30 years, too. Very expensive, very nice stuff. Good job. Cohen calls his show Chamber Magic in the tradition of so-called parlor magicians in 19th century Europe. He performs his act at Manhattan's famed Waldorf Astoria Hotel on Friday and Saturday nights in a private suite where guests pay $60 a ticket and are asked to dress up in business attire part of the image that he carefully cultivates as the millionaire's magician. This is you and Barry Diller, the financial and media guru. Yep. 
and indeed the likes of Martha Stewart and New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg have all fallen under his spell, sometimes at the private events he does for wealthy clients. Another part of the image is Ivy League education. You went to Cornell, you majored in psychology. That's right. All of my, my psychology papers were written about magic. For example, if two objects are moving, uh, one of them at a, at a different rate than the other, which one is, is the eye going to follow? Things like this, these are in, very, very important for a magician to know. At the Waldorf's Peacock Bar, Cohen gave me a little lesson in how he directs the audience's focus just where he wants it. So the most important thing is please don't take your eye off the coin, okay? Watch carefully. It's one, two, three. Oh wait, it backfired, the, uh, <laughs> the pen disappeared. And I'll show you where it went, it's actually right over here <laughs> inside of my ear. But that was just a simple trick. In his show, he tears a U.S. map into shreds to find the city an audience member has been asked to think of silently. I allow me to pinpoint one city in this great nation of ours. For the first time in a loud voice, would you tell us what is the city that you chose? San Francisco. Would you please out loud so everyone can hear you? Please read where the pin has pierced precisely on the map. San Francisco. <laughs> San Francisco. But don't even bother asking, how'd you do that? <laughs> That's the one question I never entertain. The idea as a, as a magician is to try to present your magic in such a way where the only answer is, it must be magic. In fact, I saw the show three times and still don't understand how he gets people to write down facts about themselves on cards he never seems to see, and then suddenly he's telling a kid his own locker combination. And you're turning it to open it up. You turn it to the six. Yeah. Then you turn it backwards to the 12. Yeah. And the last number you turn it to in your locker combination is 18. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. A fine job indeed. Scott, thanks for your assistance. Thank you. Thank you. So how do you think he found it out? No idea. <laughs> Mind boggling. Which is magic to Steve Cohen's ears. My goal really as a magician is not just to fool you during the show and not just to make you think, oh, wow, that's amazing, how do you do it? But to question it days and months afterwards. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, until we meet again, I'm Steve Cohen. Thanks very much for joining me here. Good night, everyone. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Hey, man, thanks.